What's up, guys? This is Coach Mark from Battle School. If you're not able to make our 30-minute intro class, I'm going to take a few minutes right now and go over some of those skill sets that you'll need in order to have a fun and effective class. Oftentimes, in the middle of class, things are pretty high-paced, and sometimes I don't have the time to give you the technical details you'll need in order to be successful and to progress through your levels. First thing that I always go through is stance. Obviously, sometimes we might not be in a martial arts stance before we're attacked or mugged or uh, an assailant comes in the home. However, if you get an opportunity at some point to get into a correct structure, this is that structure. It resembles an MMA stance to a degree. Hips are forward. My back heel is off the ground. My hands are up. They can be out as well. If I'm in a public setting, sometimes my hands will go up in this manner because it seems less aggressive. So if you're an outsider looking and someone's like, whoa, take a step back. When it comes to court time, you need to defend yourself. It looks as if you're the person who's saying, calm down. You should be. But that means you're still the same structure you could be in a normal fight. Hands up. Hips are curled and tucked under me, creating a very good rigid structure. It's as if I'm trying to make a C with my body. My elbows are in as if I'm in a small box. My chin is tucked. My hands are up or here. Both of these are acceptable in our academy. I call these antlers, keeping our head and mask extremely boxed in. Open palms. Hands are hot, ready for action. Movement. Before we actually talk about the fighter's triangle, I'm going to talk about movement first. Movement is very similar in boxing, Aikido, wrestling, and judo. I never want to cross my feet. I'll still to this day see high level guys from other martial arts academies, when they're moving, move the back leg first. It's a really good indicator that either they're not who they say they are, they haven't trained, or that their academy for whatever reason didn't teach them proper footwork, which is clutch. If I want to move this direction, this side of my body moves first. If I want to move this way, this side of my body moves first. If I want to move forwards and backwards, the same rule applies. It almost feels like a big step, little step. And as you get better at it, it'll become easy to do. Your students or yourself should feel, if you're an instructor listening to this, it should feel like a leg workout, literally just moving in your stance. Big step, little step. As a matter of fact, one of the very first drills we do is almost like Simon says. I'll say, coach says move this way. Coach says move forward. Coach says move this way. Coach says move back. The first level is just getting used to the feet. Level two may incorporate a switching of the feet. The neat thing is this doesn't matter if you're right-handed or a southpaw. The laws are always the same. The fighter's triangle. Old school karate used to teach us this type of motion. And if you can see here, what it's doing is it's creating a triangle. Much like the pitch of a roof of a house, it's able to hold a lot of weight, snow, this type of thing. That's why the pitch of the roof was designed the way that it was. It's a triangle. It's an extremely strong structure. What I'm trying to create is a triangle with my clavicle being the base of the triangle. If the point of the triangle uh, was away from my body, it would be projected forward from my spine out. Other arts might refer to this as the center line. Whenever I'm hitting, you'll see Wing Chun guys hitting into that center line. Same thing with us, whether it's karate or MMA. I'm always trying to hit on that center line projected out. If I can hit with my first two knuckles, all the better. The same rule even applies for looping style strikes. If you look, when where my impact is actually creates a triangle. This is in order to make the most amount of power out of my strikes possible. Now, with that said, level two of our footwork drills incorporates something called shielding. If I only have one way to block and only one body part that I can block, again, we can't be everywhere, where would this be? There's a place on our body called the mask. It's the jawline. I can take a shot to the rib. While it's not pleasant, 
I can continue to defend myself and my loved ones. If I'm not unconscious, there's no way for me to defend or protect myself or that of my loved ones. So the most important piece of the kit for right now is this jawline. The way that we protect this is something called a forward shield. I know that anger is a communication style that is projected towards the face. 90% of the time, if you're in an altercation, someone's gonna be running at you and they're not gonna punch you in the tummy. It may happen and a trained fighter may even be able to fit and go low and rock you in the body. That's a given. But anger in a street fight, 99.9% .9 of the time is gonna be communicated to the face. And I know they're moving that direction. Why not beat them to the punch? What I'm gonna be doing is stacking my forearms together. It looks like this. My forearms are together. My radius and ulna, the wrist area is actually on my hairline. I'm taking the small bones of the metacarpals and making sure they're protected on the top of my skull. What I don't want to have happen is during an altercation, somebody actually hit my hand and bust up my ability to either open a door handle, call 911, go for my primary weapon. I don't want my hands to be damaged. So I'm gonna hide those on the top of my skull. If you notice, even it's still even protected against hook punches as I'm bringing my shoulders to protect my jawline. Now we do have a separate answer for these types of hook punches that come in. The way that we do this is called a side shield. This is a uh, reinforced side shield, and this is just a regular side shield. Common mistakes with it, people want to open up the wing. They want to meet it out. They keep too big of a hole here. Make sure that you have the ability to literally just lift up your elbows and keep it tight against your skull. When you start to train this with your friend, if this is your very first time, you'll notice that stance will be the very first thing. People typically keep their center of gravity, sometimes more so in their chest than their hips. This is going to teach you to keep your gravity in your hips. When I'm doing this for the very first time and somebody has pads on their hands and they're pushing against your shield, what happens is they feel like they're a boat in the ocean. When they start to widen up their base and have a better anchor, they're going to feel a lot more solid when they start getting pushed on. That's taking the gravity from the chest and putting it into the hips. Now, moving on. With the motion and movement now that we've established, we're going to also call out shields. So as a coach, I might say, all right, coach says move this way, coach says move this way. As you're doing these drills forward and backwards, it's a forward shield. Sideways obviously gets a side shield. It's kind of a fun little drill. You will catch people, especially at a beginner stage. It's a lot of fun. It also allows them to practice their footwork along with their ability to defend themselves. Last part of this particular series is punching. Being able to punch and move at the same time. I'm not looking for a one-on-one -on -one class, so I'm gonna throw a perfect grab, uh, jab straight right. I'm not looking for that. What I'm looking for is the ability to keep moving and be able to use the principles in the correct way. So as I call forward, back, side to side, they're continuously striking and punching. I give them the principle of the fighter's triangle in order to just keep moving and firing off those shots into the center. Now, as they're doing it, they're gonna have to move in the correct way while their hands are simply flying. It's kind of like tapping your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. It'll feel awkward at first, but as you continue to practice it, it will improve. For now, that's it for this learning module. Go train.